Hi everybody, Josh Corman here from bookriot.com to talk with you once more about the Read Harder Challenge for 2016. The task that I'm going to tackle in this video is the read a post-apocalyptic or dystopian book. It seems to me like everywhere you turn today there is a new hot dystopian or post-apocalyptic book. It seems to kind of be the genre of the moment, which is awesome for me because there may be no book that I enjoy quite as much as the dystopian future slash post-apocalyptic novel. Some of my very favorite books could be described that way. And in fact, the book that I'm reading right now that I've checked out from the library, The Passage by Justin Cronin, uh, is supposed to fit that bill. It was described to me as a cross between Stephen King's The Stand and Cormac McCarthy's The Road. Both phenomenal books in their own right. Very different. Uh, this so far is more in line with The Stand uh, than it is with The Road. But then again, I'm just a very short way into what is a very long book. But the point is, I love this kind of writing, love these kind of books, and I'm excited to share with you a few recommendations that are excellent. First up, a comic, Alan Moore and David Lloyd's V for Vendetta. Now, you may have seen the Wachowskis movie V for Vendetta, which came out uh, starring Natalie Portman and Hugo Weaving. Uh, 2005, I'd say, uh, 10 years ago. That made me feel really old for just a minute. Okay, um, back to the comic. It is a book that explores an Orwellian kind of future in England uh, where borders have closed, where racism and xenophobia kind of run rampant, facilitated, as it almost always is in these kinds of books, by a consolidated power block who wants to keep power and who is flexing their muscle to ensure that they can do so. The lesson there, be careful who you put in positions of power. One of the things that makes V for Vendetta so different is that the character at the center of it, V here in the mask, is weirdly unsympathetic. Very often in books like this you have one straggling either person or group of, of figures who are kind of fighting against the odds to stay alive and navigate the difficulties of the particularly harsh world that they find themselves in. But V is a revolutionary who's lashing out against the evil government that's in charge. But in doing so, he does some terrible things and justifies his actions through his claims that ultimately this will lead to the overthrow of this unquestionably corrupt set of overlords. He recruits a young woman named Evie to be his protege, who at the beginning of the book has resorted to prostitution to make enough money to survive. V rescues her from a situation that's probably going to see her murdered, and from there he slowly begins to cultivate in her a revolutionary spirit. And he, some of the things that I said before that were so terrible that he does, he actually does to Evie as part of the process. You know, there's almost this military break her down and build her back up uh, kind of mentality to his methods. And the more that she discovers about who he is and what he's doing, the more it calls into question whether or not she really wants to follow through with some of the things that he's asking her to do and that he's putting her in a position to. So there's a degree of moral ambiguity, which is really interesting, which I really like, and which is kind of a trademark uh, of Alan Moore's work. There are always characters who one moment you sympathize with and the next moment you're repulsed by. So the cool thing about this as a comic, too, is it's not a superhero book, so if you're not into that sort of thing, it still gives you a chance to dive into that medium and read a really good Orwellian dystopian fantasy book. Uh, if you're into Orwell, if you're into Algis Huxley, if you've read some of those books in high school and, and enjoyed that part of them, or any books where there's, there's a kind of tyrannical government uh, at the center of power and characters trying to fight against that, then you should definitely check out V for Vendetta. I think you'll enjoy it a whole lot. All right, the next book that I want to share with you is one of my favorites from the past few years. And I'm in a weird spot because the book is so dependent on a couple of key pieces of information being revealed to you only when the author wants you to have them that I feel kind of terrified to say too much. I definitely don't want to ruin even the slightest bit of this book for you, and that is M.R. Carey's The Girl with All the Gifts. This is a book like V for Vendetta that is set in a version of England in the near future, and it centers around a young teacher and her classroom of precocious and very interesting students who are, as the novel opens, kept in a secure location, transported to and from class individually uh, by armed soldiers. And in keeping with what I said before about not spoiling anything, the reasons for all that stuff become apparent as the novel goes along. One of the things that the girl with all the gifts does so well is it only gives you as much information as you need to keep pulling you along but it never feels like you're being unnecessarily teased or just dragged around 
by the author for the sake of messing with the audience. And the novel also takes the post-apocalyptic genre, which is a genre that seems like it has these tropes that kind of can't be broken and that they're present in almost every version of this kind of story. Uh, but it really turns a lot of that stuff on its head. It keeps you guessing. The characters are incredibly well crafted. And I think honestly, as great as the story is and as pulse pounding as this book is, it's really exciting. I think the best thing about it is the characters that Carrie creates in writing this story, they feel totally lived in. Even characters that you only get to see for a short period of time feel really fleshed out. Their interactions with each other are so loaded with emotional complexity that sometimes it's easy to kind of miss the action because you're so involved and wrapped up in some sort of personal interaction that when things get crazy, it can feel kind of like you've just been jerked out of a conversation that you're having with someone that you care deeply about. So great action, great characters, and a story that really keeps you ripping through the pages. I don't know what more you could want in a post-apocalyptic novel. I don't know what more you could want in a novel, period. The world is totally convincing. The reasons behind all of the stuff that's going on with the kids, their protection, the way that they're being guarded, the base that they're a part of, why everything is set the way that it is as the novel opens, is I think brought to life in such a way that you just accept it. You buy into that world uh, fully, and that is something that's hard sometimes, I think, for post-apocalyptic novels to do. They have a lot of world building to accomplish, really gain the reader's trust and let them be lost in the world and in the story, and The Girl with All the Gifts absolutely does that. One of the best books I've read in the last several years. Check that one out for sure. Last recommendation for the dystopian book task is Nady Okorafor's Who Fears Death. Now, Who Fears Death is set in a futuristic version of the Sudan, where things, as you might imagine, given the topic of the task here, have gone terribly wrong. And one thing that's a little different about Who Fears Death is that there is a kind of fantasy element to it where the writer's not necessarily trying to ground it totally in the reality uh, of the day and just build in explanations for why things are the way that they are. There is a fantasy element to it. Uh, Who Fears Death actually won the World Fantasy Award, I think in 2011, uh, and so it fits kind of firmly within that genre as well. If you have a fantasy interest, then this book might be one that kind of pulls you in a little bit more. The main character, Onya Sonwu, is actually where the book's title comes from, because in Igbo, that name means Who Fears Death. And a little bit of a warning here about this book, Onya Sonwu is born after her mother is raped by a member of the powerful class. He's also literally powerful. He also has some magical powers, as does the main character, and once she becomes mature, she sets off on a quest to track him down, confront him, and ultimately fight him after everything that he did to her mother and to her as well. One other warning for this book, the main character undergoes forced genital mutilation, which obviously is a horrific subject, but something that is very real in a lot of cultures around the world. Okorafor was actually kind of challenged uh, about this once she wrote the book. She is Nigerian, and she said after the book was published that obviously the act is horrible. She's proud of her culture and of its traditions, but she also recognizes that it's not that simple, right? That culture is an amorphous thing. It's not set in stone. And she said that she wanted to kind of go down this road and open up some of these doors and have difficult conversations, use this novel as a way to do it. So if you think reading about that would be a problem, then best to avoid this one. Picking three for this one was really, really difficult because as I said, so many books that I've loved over the years that I use as recommendations for anything, even when people aren't looking uh, for post-apocalyptic or dystopian novels. Let us know what book you found to check off this task of the Read Harder Challenge for 2016. Tell us about those in the comments below the video here, or let us know on social media. Tag your social media posts with the hashtag Read Harder so that we at Book Riot and everybody else who's participating in the challenge can check out some of those great recommendations and find a great book to keep their progress on the challenge moving along. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.